How does somebody even recognize that their hormones are out of balance or that that may be the root cause of some other things that they're going through? Yeah, that's a great question. And there's certainly hormone testing. I'm a big, I advocate testing. I believe there are numbers we need to know. But I created an online quiz called the Hormone Toxicity Quiz. And also in my book, The Hormone Fix, I have a few inventories that I've created. So we have a hormone review system inventory. And so just questionnaire, just asking ourselves. And some, so many women, when they've taken this questionnaire, they're like, man, I didn't realize how bad things were. And, and just within weeks of following my program, their numbers are halved, you know, or significantly lower. And that, and they're realizing, man, I just was putting up with these symptoms. And I thought it was just a function because I'm getting older and it's never gonna get better. And wow, in just a few weeks, these symptoms are gone. And that's critical. So symptom inventory questionnaires, like, you know, do I feel moody? Am I having mood swings, et cetera? What's going on? That's one way, it's just that self-assessment. The other is to do some lab testing, and I typically recommend functional lab test and you know key laboratory panels. And I actually put that information in my book so you can look and understand what I really need to be looking for in my labs. So how does someone know, and when we're talking about hormone levels, what's normal for them? And, and do you wanna find that out before you get to the age where they do start changing? I mean, you said at the beginning that they can fluctuate from day to day to week to week to month to month. So where do you even find a normal range for yourself? Yeah, that's a really good point. And it can be, again, fluctuate mm -hmm. for, when we're typically measuring hormones, we're measuring blood hormone levels. Right. And that gives us that instant in time. And so for women testing, if you're on your menstrual cycle, there's a certain time of the month that we want to measure. If you're having regular periods, we typically want to look at peak hormone levels and then baseline low, you know, day, cycle day three hormone levels. So 21 day or day three and or day three hormone levels. That gives us some information. So I think it's a good idea to kind of look at that information at any point of your life. Um, but definitely when we get older, our normal levels are pretty much, you know, in the tank, right? They're all low and like, hey, you're normal. And I'll tell you a story because I had a patient come to me early on in my practice, 1999, one of my first patients when I was in private practice. And she came to me and she said, Dr. Anna, I have had a history of breast um, ductal carcinoma in situ of the breast. So, uh, and she said, my doctors won't give me any estrogen and I have vaginal dryness, low libido, and I'd rather die than live this way. Can you help me? And so I said, well, let me look and see what I have to offer. And I looked in my doctor's bag and I looked and I looked and I didn't have anything there. So I went to the research and I said, well, what can I offer this woman who's had a you know, ductal carcinoma in side two of the breast? What can I do for her? And so I learned, that's where I really started my journey in understanding hormones and so I tested her hormones but back in 1999 I drew hormone levels and she had a testosterone level of zero and that was read as normal mm. so because number one the sensitivity of the testing was for men men's levels are 100 times higher than women on an average basis so the testing didn't have the sensitivity and there was no normal range like what's normal everyone who you know is being tested and there's there was not really good sensitivity in testing right. especially for that age group so what I tell clients is like, you know, for example, like eight out of 10 of the people that go into Walmart are your normal comparisons. So the, do you want to be normal? Because that's how labs do their, norm, their curves, right? What's the mean? Do you want to be normal or do you want to be optimal? And so we have to look at what is normal and what are optimal levels. And I also list those out in my book to help clients like look at, okay, this is what you need to, this is what you need to aim for. So that's one thing, but looking throughout our age, if you're 50, 60, 70, it's very, very valuable to look and see where they are. But blood testing gives us one image. Urinary testing gives us another image, including detoxification of your hormones, your estrogen metabolites, which is critically important over age 30. I think all of us should know how are we detoxifying estrogen. Because, and over age 30, because breast cancer is not a, a disease of menopause anymore. Premenopausal breast cancers are taking lives, causing havoc, and are so virally aggressive that we have to start intervening. We have to start preventing right now, however old we are. You know, my, my girls, my daughters, I, keep, I tell them, you know, I was actually in the shower <laughs> this morning and I'm like, what's this body wash thing? And 
my daughter's like, oh, mom, it smells great. I'm like, looking at the ingredients, no, I want healthy grandbabies. You cannot use this. You know, I'm thinking breast cancer prevention starts now. Fertility, you know, um, preserving fertility starts now. So we take away those hormone disruptors. I'm like, I don't care how good it smells, get rid of it. And so that's really important to understand. So learning early on what is optimal for you. And again, I'm not talking about in our 50s, 60s that we have levels of our 20s and 30s. Right. We need this transition of menopause, of perimenopause. It's really vital for our rewiring, just as important as puberty was. Hmm. So if we block that transition, like so many people are doing with birth control pills, that creates a we know that creates a long time adverse problem with hormones. That person, we are setting our youth up for hormonal difficulties throughout their life. We need to have that rewiring, have that fluctuations, increase that resilience and, and hormonal capacity to have, to be able to identify the highs and low swings and what we need to do to create some harmony there. The same thing is true in menopause. And you know, and so many patients will be like, hey, Dr. Ann, I'm 52 and I've been on birth control pills because my doctor's like, well, this will keep you hormonally stable until you don't need them any longer. And like, do you need birth control? And she said, no, I had my tubes tied when I was 28. I'm like, well, that makes no sense. We cannot do that. We cannot do that to, a, <laughs> to anyone in our nation. It doesn't make sense. So it's my soapbox on that one. <laughs> passionate about that. Be optimal, not normal. And do not interfere with nature. We want to empower our bodies, support our bodies, but not, not suppress any significant functions.